Incoming transmission. Greetings, intergalactic campers. We are here to notify you of an auspicious cosmic event occurring at Starstruck Farm, Lebanon, Tennessee, August 17th to 20th of Earth Year 2023. Humans have labeled this event Hot Alien Summer Camp, and forces across the multiverse are confirm it to be an unparalleled community convergence phenomenon. Expect to experience sound baths, energetic exchanges, metaphysical vendors and practitioners, yoga, live music, Reiki, and comedy performances by Karen Rontowski and Ryan Singer. And most importantly, restful, enriching connection with your fellow aliens. Hot Alien Summer Camp, where cosmic forces align for an unforgettable adventure. Go to HotAliensummerCamp.com to book your tickets and let the magic unfold. Transmission complete. Welcome to Synchronicity. Welcome to Synchronicity, guys. We got a real special, special. Yeah, that's how we'll start it with just a complete flub of the word special, which is not a particularly difficult word, but nonetheless, I fucked it up. We have a special episode of Synchronicity this week. I really think you're going to like it. <clears throat> for anyone who's been wondering what the fuck has been going on with me for the past year and a half, two years as my, uh, you know, I've not been putting out a lot of podcasts. I've kind of just been all over the place in a lot of ways. This is the episode where it clears a lot of that up. I have my good friends, soul sister, soul brother, Jessa Reed and Mark Pontius. We got together in New York City uh, the other day. It was great catching up with them in person. It's a really great episode in so many ways. I know you're going to enjoy it. Um, and this is the one for people, let's say you know someone who listened to this podcast and then they stopped listening to it because I was so toxically positive about the imagination stuff. You have them listen to this episode and see what they think after that because I think they're gonna like it. Anyway, it's cool. Sign up for the Patreon if you want fun stuff. There are live streams every week. We have Zodiac readings, which will be public for one more month. I'm going to do the readings, the Zodiac readings for everyone. If you didn't see them, the July ones are up and available now. Go check them on the YouTube, on twitch.com slash thinkpod, on kick.com slash thinkpod, and youtube.com slash Noah Lampert. You can re see all those Zodiac readings, those for the signs, uh, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Go check those out. Um, Patreon is the place to be. We got the crypto discord server. Shit is going on. Shit is popping off. Uh, and I think I said I was only going to do 13 episodes of synchronicity a year. I probably lied. It's probably going to be more. It's hard for me to stay away. I've gotten my mojo back guys, or I'm getting it back. I should say. It's not fully back. I'm not Austin powers. Hasn't fully discovered his mojo. Dr. Evil still has a little bit of it. But it's coming back. I'm psyched. I got to get through this fucking Pluto shit, guys. You'll hear in this episode. I got to get through it. I'm thinking October. I think it loosens up after then. I got to get through the fucking nightmare button. What is the nightmare button? Stay tuned and find out. Okay, without further ado, here are Jessa Reed and Mark Pontius. <laughs> wife hit me up at the same time because I had sent her this video and I was like oh she's like I don't think there's audio and I was like oh okay and then it started to dawn on me that everything I had recorded this week also wasn't gonna be and I was like fuck this it, you're having a nightmare button it is it's literally a nightmare button it's like the easy button you know like yeah you have, this is the nightmare button no the nightmare button because I, I envision that wherever we are as above so below right so wherever yeah. we are is um, there's like a desk, there's like a control center where you're playing the video game <laughs> and that there is for some reason a nightmare button and every once in a while you accidentally set your coffee cup down on it and then there's just a cloud. I've had this experience just a few months ago. I went to LA and uh, started feeling sorry for myself about something. Yeah. Bombed on a podcast and then was feeling sorry for myself and within 24 hours 
I was, there was a, there was every time I went outside, it started like monsoon raining. Yeah. And then as soon as I would get in my car, it would stop. Yeah. And then as soon as I would have to get out of the car, it would start again. Nothing was working. You, your order's wrong at every yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Your debit card gets stolen. Uh, the bill you paid didn't go through. Yeah. It's a nightmare button. And you just have to, you just have to laugh. The question is, is like, why the fuck would there be a nightmare button? <laughs> And why do we keep it so close to where we put our shit down? Because I obviously do not put this button here consciously. Like, I don't want this shit to be happening. I mean, we were talking before. I was ex- explaining how, you know, how shittily things have been going and how chaotic is really the right word. I don't want to say shittily. It's just like chaotic. It's been rough in almost every aspect of my life and how I'm over it. I don't want this anymore. But in some ways it does feel kind of like a course correction we were talking about. It's just like, fuck though. Like, <sighs> can we make this podcast, this episode about this? Of course. I, this is so fucking good. Yeah. 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 We in, uh, hi Mark, Mark's here also. Hey, hi Mark. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> we, we in, in 2019, you know, I saw your your Patreon post the other day that said talking about the catalog of yes. synchronicity, and yes. you were like, "I recommend 2019, yeah. 2020. Yeah. This is when I was especially prolific. Yes, <laughs> this is when things were good and everything was great, and imagination was only used for positive, amazing manifestation. Yeah, yeah this was before we got humbled. I got yeah. humbled before you got humbled. Yeah, you were I got ahead. I I got my ass handed to me. I ran around in 2019 talking about the death of the masculine is coming and the collapse and all of these things. And I always think they're not going to happen to me as if the reason I'm getting downloads and heads up because it's like, bitch, duck. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) But I'm always like, hey, you guys should duck. I hear it's about to get rough. And then I get my ass handed to me. And in the end, I'm like so grateful. Yeah. These these experiences where, where everything feels like it's happening to you and it's very difficult and you find your way back out again. These are high level yeah. experiences, you know, from the zoomed out playing the game perspective. Uh, I fucking do not enjoy them it's when the I'm in them. Worse. That's the thing. Like you recognize retrospect. If you're lucky enough, you can recognize as you're going through it, but it's, it's not even that. Cause like I do recognize now and I have the proper perspective. I believe that this isn't like, I'm not being punished. Right. There's not something going wrong. It's not like I was so fucked up and now this is like my karmic retribution for like, you know, misspeaking or it, it is for your own benefit. It's like a breakup, right? Like if you've been in a relationship and you don't want the relationship to end, but then you look back after and you're like, Oh my God, like thank God it ended. Either you find a new relationship or you realize like there were some toxic elements like you get that perspective, but you know, I was saying before, like I've been going to a lot of astrologers and like, they're like, yeah, your Pluto and your Saturn are fucking your shit up. And <laughs> I I say this every, cause I do astrological readings. I do tarot and I do give the preface where it's like, listen, this isn't doing something to you. It's just like an energetic weather report. And these are the conditions that are out there. They're not condemning you to something. They're not binding you, but this is actually the energy that's out there and it does have an influence on kind of your perception of things. And I, like I was saying, I'm, I'm ready for Pluto to move the fuck out of here. Like I, I, I truly, it almost, these types of experiences beat you down until you have nothing left except to build a new foundation and up. And it's, it's not fun. <laughs> it's just, have you been able to identify any positive part of it yet or like the lesson? Yes. Unquote? And I, I, we were also mentioning this, like I, I've been more public about this recently, but I was doing so well financially with crypto. I had more money than I've ever had. You know, it was like close to $2 million very quickly. This is in like 2020, 2021 that I, people know this. I stopped doing the podcast. I was maybe checking in like once every three or four months I wasn't paying attention to my Patreon. I wasn't doing live streams. I wasn't doing shit because I was so focused on making money and making more money and really for no other reason than making money. Like it wasn't like, oh, let me make this money so I can go on a great trip or buy this cool thing. It was just like I became subservient to the idea of money being the end game. And I was somewhat aware of that, but I also was at the same time aware that like I wasn't happier 
like mm. uh, at all. Like I wasn't like, I, and my wife is very fond of reminding me how I was actually kind of miserable. Like, and I think I just lost touch with what I'm supposed to be doing, which sounds weird, but like, I know when something is feeding me on like a, like if you eat like good home cooked meal, like organic, healthy, lovingly raised, like, you know, the difference of that than like going to Burger King or McDonald's, right. which may taste great and give you a rush. But like, it's, you know, the difference in how that feels and your activities and what you do in life are the same fucking thing. And I just had gotten so far removed from that, that I just, my life started kind of crumbling. And on top of it, and we were speaking about this too, I had approached this imagination stuff with such a positivity that I think people who weren't in that mind state, A, it probably was like nails on a chalkboard for them because yeah. it's just like, if you're not in a place of like feeling fully in flow or happy and realizing even like the bad stuff is good stuff when someone's telling you you can change your entire life by using these techniques or imagining this like that's not gonna work it actually sounds like bullshit and it can actually turn people off so i do believe that the reason i'm going through this and have gone through this over the last year and a half two years is i have to like understand where more people are at so i can be better at actually explaining what is going on and what does work, at least for me, because my goal with this, it's not like I think about what the goal is, but I've realized over the years, and I know this from the feedback I get, that I can break down things and communicate them in a way that maybe is hard for people to understand if they hear it from someone else or they try to go into it themselves. And for me, I can break ap apart the component parts and you know analyze it and communicate it in a way that doesn't sound like stupid or hard to get into. But if I'm just focusing on the positive and the light and the sunshine, that's not authentic. That's not a person's life. No one's life is an upward trajectory their entire life. It is just not how it works. And focusing on that, I think I needed to kind of go into the depths to like get that perspective, to be able to like, A, figure out what was important to me and B, speak about it and communicate it in a way that was like more real, more like holistic, I guess is the right word. Almost like a retracing your steps, right? Because we were, we were talking about this earlier where, and this has been... I've changed, I, I absorbed the idea of spiritual bypassing yeah. and I played with it for a couple years. And then I'm like, now I'm like, mm. I think that spiritual bypassing is when people bring their head to a heart party yeah. when they, and, and most of the time we bring our head to a heart party because we're not yet uh, capable of bringing our heart to a heart party. Yeah. So I feel like spiritual bypassing is a phase of expanding your consciousness because you get these mental ideas, you get these hacks, you know, for me, it was like hacks for you. It was the imaginal stuff, yeah, yeah. but there comes a point where it's like, okay, well, do you want to expand your awareness to include the emotional realm? Because if so, you're going back into the underworld and you're going to have to retrace your steps and that mental stuff works for the mental space. But now I'm in a place where it's like, well, tell that to my nervous system. Exactly. Because those mental tricks do work. They are good. They don't do shit if my nervous system gets thrown off, yeah. you know? And um, so a lot of the accusations of like toxic positivity or even the way that the new age movement approaches things like manifestation, whatever, is it's, it's a paradox because it's like what they're saying is true. Right. But what they're saying is something that works if you're already, the plane's already in the sky. If right. the plane's already in the sky, lay down, close your eyes, imagine the thing you want and you shift to it. Yes. But if the plane has landed in the ocean, there has to be a, con you know, you can't get out of the ocean when you're in the depths of that and you're in the feelings place and you've the nightmare button has been going for, for weeks on end, you can't just go, well, just think positively. And when you say that to someone who's in that space, yeah. they want to punch you in your mouth exactly. and rightfully so. And that's where the empathy comes in is like, and if we've not experienced that. It's, you don't know what you're talking about also. Right. And you don't mean to come to it like that. And one thing I have realized, whether you call it imagination or like tuning your frequency or vibration is, this isn't something that gets turned off. Right. It's not like, oh, because I'm thinking about manifesting something, then I will manifest. You're always doing it. Yeah. So if you're in a space of kind of 
depression or chaos or just things being a clusterfuck, you're also creating that at the same time, which you don't want to pile on someone who's going through it because it's like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I already feel bad. Don't tell me I'm the person creating this. Mm. But that is all it's always active. There's no off button in this reality in terms of like stopping generating reality. That's called death. Like then you're not here anymore and it's something else. So trying to identify and become aware of where you're at and then hopefully having the empathy and being able to see where other people might be at and people outside of your perspective at that current time is kind of essential because then like you are like I God knows how many people I just like sounded like a fucking lunatic or just an asshole to because I, listen, I, I don't believe any of this imagination stuff isn't real. It's a hundred percent real. I've experienced my my life now is still a testament to how all of this stuff works. It's just, if you're not at the place where you're able to do that or access it consciously, it seems like almost an attack. Like you're criticizing someone for not having an abundance mindset and criticizing them for feeling lack or being sad. And I just, I, I kind of always knew I was missing that, but it was working so well for me personally and other people. I mean, I still to this day get so many emails and Instagram DMs of people like, you changed my life. Like I finally got it and it clicks. I got when we were sitting down there at lunch or at talking, having coffee. Like, so I recognize it is reaching people, but I think what I'm really trying to talk about is how people can bring awareness into their lives so they at least have the option to live the life that they want to live. Like that's just the option. I, they don't have to do it, but to have the ability to at least access it rather than saying, hey, do it this way. You have to do it this way because this is the only way to do it or it's the best way to do it. Um, because you will, as a person, inevitably go through ebbs. And like it's just life that's like you need to recognize that everything is temporary and temporary does not imply duration it doesn't mean temporary is 10 years five years three seconds 10 months it's it's just it's not transitory. going to last yes right it's transitory and so you know i've been thinking about this idea of kind of sustaining certain modes of thought and how that's also something that I think I completely missed because shifting into a mind state is one thing, but fully integrating that and allowing it to actually become a part of you fully and like access these other parts of your brain or whatever. Um, that's a huge component of this too, because what good is it if you manifest the life of your dreams and then the Cinderella bell goes off and you fucking go back to a pumpkin in the middle of it. It's almost worse than not right. having it. So that's another thing that I think I'm learning. And I, I was complaining before that like, I wish I hadn't signed up for this because it fucking is annoying. Like I, I don't <laughs> want to go through shitty times to have to learn that perspective. I want to read about it and be like, oh yeah, there's something called hard times. Now I get it. But I do think a function of this reality and having a physical body and having a physical reality is you did sign up to go through this stuff. So you right. can't skirt that. And if you're trying to skirt it right now at this time, you will kind of face those consequences and it's not fun. <laughs> no. And this is where I think Mark has an advantage over people like you and I, yeah. because you and I woke up at a similar time. And like, obviously I've har had hardships since I woke up, but for the most part, um, I, I'm, I leave a lot of space in my reality for tragedy, loss, whatever. So, uh, when, when I hit hard times, I don't necessarily think that that is in opposition of creating right. reality, but I also see reality as a video game. So I'm like, yeah, of course, sometimes it's hard, right. but it's been an upward trajectory, right? So it's, is I learn a new uh, skill, I expand my awareness, and I get more things, not things, like material things, but like powers, and Skills, but also yeah. mater material life has gotten more comfortable, relationships have gotten easier, whatever is part of that thing. But Mark, you woke up at like the pinnacle of 3D success. While I remember the first time you ever told me the story, you said, I reached all these, like I accomplished all of my goals in a very short period of time. And here I had everything that I'm supposed to want and this deep sense of lack mm. set in. So it's almost like you had to go down in order to 
find that. And I, since I've met you, um, you don't have, you don't have that kind of fairy tale Peter Pan. I've never seen you go through that phase. <laughs> like everything's going to be easy. <laughs> You're uh, kind of the opposite. Have you ever felt that way? Like, I'll just think positively and everything will be positive. Yeah. Well, kind of, I mean, yeah, I was trying to think like why, as you guys were both talking, I'm like, what, how am I, like, what is my view on this? Cause I, I, in my head, I have been, uh, guilty. I mean, on the external too, but I'm guilty of having this kind of just positive thinking. Um, like a lot of my friends in the music business would always be asking for advice. Like how do I need to promote this? And like, I need to make this record. How do I do it? How do I succeed? And then I would just, you know, kind of coldly say, don't worry about any of that shit. Just make your art and like, mm -hmm. just keep doing it and it'll work. And then they're always like, well, that's easy for you to say. Mm -hmm. And I would find myself kind of taking on this role of like, yeah, I guess I'm just saying shit that seems easy from my perspective, but on the like tactile ground level, these people don't know how to like uh, apply that, you know, and they always blame it on like my position of where I'm at. So in my, like in this pivot in my life, kind of in the last three or four years, which did involve being really successful in, in my career and having a lot of eyes on me and then going down off of that. So leaving that band, leave, or losing a lot of friends, losing relationships, all these things. I guess the only thing that did like make me ride that down and kind of just put my hands up and go, wee, <laughs> was like a... I guess the combination of, at first it was dark. I mean, this was it, building up to that sweet release. It was dark because I was confused by the success and the top being not so life fulfilling, like not core soul um, happiness. It was just material stuff that I could tell was fleeting. That I um, that was dark until I realized that there was another thing. Mm -hmm. And that was what I would say was like waking up or mm -hmm. some mystical thing that I was like, oh shit, there's something more than just this physical material kind of thing. And that made me go, okay, I'm gonna just put my hands up to the reality a bit more and, and flow into this, even though it's like downhill mm -hmm. as culture's standards or other people's view on me is like I'm leaving the band and failing and all my friends are gone so I'm a failure but I there's just something inside that I was like well I'm still alive and like I did that like I checked that off and that's really that feels good and I'm kind of done like I don't want to continue doing that so it's hard to explain that to people that I haven't really had that feeling of that there's uh, it isn't there's no peak like it isn't what you think it is and so that like was some kind of gift inside that I could hold on to that even when it was really tough. And I felt people hating me that I was like, well, I'm going to be OK. Like something will come from this downhill thing. There's going to be a pendulum and it'll I'll come back up in a way that will be more fruitful and I will actually have some like solid foundation. Um, so I don't know if any of that makes sense, but it just it is like a hard I find to some people when you say that it's like it is it feels like cl cloud thing like something it's just uh this positivity that doesn't really get you through the darkness but there's um it was like my internal life vest or some sort that I just like kind of knew that there was going to be something on the other side right well you're very flow oriented where I think the thing that Noah and I relied on until we got humbled uh, is more, more masculine, but masculine, I'm saying logic, left side of the brain, mental space. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I feel like I'd already learned this lesson once or twice before we hit 2020. So I wasn't, I, when I started getting my ass handed to me, I wasn't actually surprised because <laughs> I've already, it's not my first rodeo, yeah. but I'm much more now in flow. So now it's like, what does my body say? Like what feels true? And I, I don't try you know, I don't try, I don't force. And that's, that's, I've had to have several rodeos to get to that point, but something that like 2020 and 2021, just like holding me down to the ground, chronic illness for 18 months. I come out of that. I have a, a, a miscarriage. I almost die during, 
I come out of those experiences. I, lo I lost my memories. I lost half my personality to, to the illness. Um, I couldn't podcast. I couldn't form sentences half the time. I mean, it was like scary to be losing all of that. And a lot of it's just now coming back. I mean, yeah. it's still every day I go, oh shit, I didn't think that was ever coming back. Um, has forced me into flow though, where I feel like Mark is someone who's just been in just this kind of like flowing, what's the vibe person yeah. his whole life. Well, I do got to say just quickly, I, there, I do find myself in flow. And I, when I think back to like, when I wasn't even aware of these things, I just was doing that early in life because there were a couple decisions that like it was confirmed to me and I didn't know how to put a label on it, but I just knew there was this inner mechanism that I could just follow. And sometimes that from the outside, other people that looked like it was going against the grain. Like I, from when I was 18, I moved out to LA, took a huge loan, moved out to LA to do film school. And everybody else was like, what the fuck are you doing? You're leaving your hometown. You don't have any money. You don't know anybody. What are you doing? That doesn't, that, that's even my parents were like in support, but they were like, you're making a really crazy decision. And that paid off so much within the first couple of years. And even like I went out and then didn't really finish film school, but was massively in debt and pivoted into music. And I the told other everybody great stable career choice. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Neither one of them are good, but it, it was this like quick pivoting that just felt, I felt inside like this, you should do this. And so I, I realized I got lured out there under the guise of film school. And I tell you, I was so confident. Like I had done music for a while, but I was like, that's not my thing. Film is it. And just across the board. I told all my friends, bragged I was going to be like winning Oscars soon and all of this stuff. And then it didn't turn out to that. And But then I saw, oh, that opened this other door for music. And I was so sure that I didn't want to do film that now I want to do music. Mm. And it was hard to explain that to people because they were like, you're crazy. You just went into debt and you moved out there. You sacrificed. But then that led me to the next door, next door, next door. And then it eventually led me into the door of like, real monetary success and real like artistic success and it's really hard to explain every one of those little pivots but it was just a thing that i kind of started to flow and go this looks crazy to everybody and they're even going to think i'm crazy for a minute but they'll see in the long run this was the right thing and so it is extremely hard when i got to that like quote unquote top thing and then go oh so now the flow instinctual element is to just abandon this yeah. all and like literally go the other direction and go down like it's definitely not easy i didn't i wasn't just like okay cool yeah like yeah. i'm gonna do it but um that internal thing is definitely i don't know what made me originally start doing that but it, it does come very easy to me and i think that's what's protected my like consciousness through it i don't get as depressed because i can always revert to this thing that is kind of cheesy it's just like well i'm alive cool you know and sometimes that's all you got yeah <laughs> tell me about it <laughs> jesus fucking christ i i am I, that is literally when you're at that base level of gratitude just for being alive you know like it's all <laughs> fucked up <laughs> shit is shit is rough i mean and, and what you're talking about there i think is is something that i'm very familiar with which is this inner conviction one thing even in my darkest of days that i truly know i believe on like my deepest levels of being is that things have worked out like there's enough good stuff that has already happened to me and just is happening to me that i'd have to like bash my head in with a brick to totally forget that there is a lot of good stuff and things are temporary good and bad but bad is included in that you don't stay at this level and i think where people tend to get in trouble, including myself, is when you start buying into the narrative that like this isn't going to end. Like this is just what life is. And yeah. people can stay like that for a really long period of time. I used to think my tolerance level for it was like infinitesimal. Like I could stay in like that for a day or two. No, it's not true. I've stayed in <laughs> there for out. a year, year, two years, which, you know, in the grand scheme of things may not be a huge period of time. But for me, it's felt almost unbearable just because... I'm not used to that on one level. And I think you have to go through some level of that. It doesn't have to be to the extremes that I seem to be gravitating towards, but it, it makes you more complete. It also makes you more 
like I was saying before that everyone close to me in my life has said that I lack empathy and I don't ever think of myself as lacking empathy. In fact, I think that I'm actually very in touch with what other people are feeling with and I can sympathize and empathize. But when everyone in your life who you're close with is saying you lack empathy, you kind of have to check yourself and be like, fuck, like either I'm not expressing this correctly or maybe I really do lack empathy. And as someone who's typically thought of myself of being like pretty in touch with my emotions, I have learned very quickly that I am not there, like <laughs> at all. Like I'm not, it's not even close. Like it's like, I, I thought I was like this sensitive, in tune, really like compassionate person. And I believe there's elements of that, but I've caught myself enough times suppressing and pushing down uncomfortable emotions related to trauma or fear or codependency or just whatever, mortality, that like I can't keep that illusion going longer like it's it's very clear to me that i have work that i need to do or at least shift my attention and perspective on my emotions and getting that in tune because what i've been saying for years is that your emotions are what generate your reality in no small part that's really you can think about this shit forever but how you feel and what you actually believe based on your emotions is actually the generator of your experience so if you're suppressing or lopping off huge chunks of your emotions, like what do you think is going to happen? Like what do you think inevitably is going to get swept back from under the rug? Like if you can't keep it there forever, that lump is going to be too fucking huge. You're going to step on it. It's going to fly out. And rather than looking at that as like something horrible or something has gone wrong, it's like surrendering to the idea that this is for your benefit. Like you don't want to live a life in the dark. You don't want to live in a life that's maybe even comfortable or fun or just happy at the expense of being like a complete person who can connect with other people and higher dimensions. And like, that's all not a necessary component, but like something that at least for me is very important. Like I, I know that that's something that I value. And so I have to, you know, I've had to put in this annoying fucking work of like <laughs> going inside and you know copping to the shadow stuff that like you know as much as you think anyone who says they've like dealt with their shadow stuff fully know that they haven't even started like that's that and i was someone who would probably say yeah i deal with my shadow I, i've dealt with it all the time i know what my flaws are i know where i'm a shitty person i know my what my deep dark i didn't know shit like i hadn't even touched it <laughs> at all and like that's – it's good to get to a place where you actually can like admit that because then you can actually start doing it like if you want to. And it's hard and it's scary and it's not fun and I like fun things. But I I know – I was saying like I, I'm not at the light at the end of the tunnel yet, but at least I see that it's there. I can see that I'm approaching it. So I, while it's not like in my rear view mirror, I know that this is like something that is – coming i can feel that inside but it also requires me to actually do that and proceed on that path and not kind of like just give up because i know that it's coming and don't have to do anything like it is work at the end of the day and work can be fun it doesn't have to be a burden but if you've treated it like something that you don't want to do or some icky bad thing like you can only escape that for so long. Like it, it's it's not something you can push away forever. And I've really had to come to terms with that uh, and been beaten down like in almost every aspect of my life that I thought I had like mastered and overcome. And yeah, it's... Uh, what do you guys think of the idea that the shadow work isn't something that you deal with once and then like it's over, that it's right. you actually become more the more awareness you have the more growth and transmutations that you do the better more capable you become at and quicker you become at like dealing with it when it shows itself and that eventually i guess those patterns get lighter and you could say that state is less shadow and more light but does it ever really go away like i, I feel like as a being conscious in the material world it's like that's kind of the game with the dualistic nature of it what do you guys I do think that awakening is a finite process. I think it's a I think it's a 10 year process. And roughly, I do think there is a point where you know, awakening is really I'm starting to call it the softening. Mm. 
and like expansion is a great way to describe it where we were living in a limited version of our own awareness. So we just had awareness of the ego forever, right? So our, our created, our subconsciously created identity. And then we became aware of the mental space and now the emotional space. And like, I'm still, I'm getting to know my body and the yeah. fucking planet I live on for the first time. So I do think that it's, it's somewhat finite, you know? Um, one thing that I was thinking about when you were talking is just like what the last few years have been. And I'm starting to feel like I'm going to start publicly podcasting. Don't anybody hold me to that. Cause <laughs> who the fuck knows, but I have felt like I don't have anything to say because yeah. I am just in a fucking, I'm in the washing machine. Yeah. Right. And so much of the way that I look at the world is changing. And what has really been challenged for me, I think I'm about to do an episode of Spiritual Bro just called like Change My Mind, where I just talk about everything that I said on Soberish that I'm like, well, now that I have the context. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I realize how escapist, and I could only realize this through healing, right? So like we, we can't hate ourselves for this, but like how escapist the idea of utopia is um, and what has really been challenged in the last few years in all of us in different ways is like, how do you define that? Yeah. And I realize that we are all defining that as something different, but we're all still looking for that savior. We're looking for that, that other place. And what I have found that this expansion has done has brought me home to myself. And the idea, I never really resonated with the two earths or the whatever, like the fucking rapture gets sucked off the planet <laughs> shit or that everyone else is going to have to die or whatever. None of that felt true. I played with it for a minute, but yeah. ultimately it's like learning for me because I was heavily disconnected from my emotions. For me, so much of this stuff was about escaping feelings. Yeah. You know, and I have learned how to sit with feelings and it, it, for a lot of people, myself included in some ways is about escaping things being difficult ever. Yeah. And, and now it's like, I've expanded everything, including my worldview. Like I leave room in my worldview for things to be difficult, uh, for me to be wrong, for, um, me to not have the full picture for tragedy to happen, for loss to happen, for relationships to end, for sickness to happen. And, and when I have all of that can exist in my worldview, I'm not in this perpetual state of trying to escape through right. spirituality or right. whatever, but you really just have to be like shoved underwater yeah. for an extended period of time to realize like, I'm still okay. And my awakening and the first time I realized I the happiness was inside of you was or inside of me was um 2003-ish so I'm like three years into my awakening and I'm addicted to drugs it's the middle of the night and I'm just having that realization where I didn't so much of that lifestyle for a lot of it was like I didn't live anywhere so it was like couch surfing basically and it's like you have to be very useful or entertaining yeah. to have around so that yeah. people give you drugs and keep you around <laughs> And uh, I had just hit one of those times. It happened a, f a few times where I didn't, ha didn't have anybody that wanted me on their couch. Yeah. And so I'm like in this bus stop and I'm, I'm out of drugs, which means I'm just going to pass out involuntarily when, you, when you're addicted to meth and you fall asleep. That's it. You're just sleeping wherever you're at for 12 hours. Doesn't matter if it's in public and you're in danger. Um, I didn't have any cigarettes and I was addicted to cigarettes. I didn't have 25 cents to put into a payphone to call somebody. And even if I did, there was no one to call. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm staring at the shell gas station that I'm sitting across and I'm like, Oh, I have no move. I have absolutely no move. And I just was okay. I just like tuned into this. I don't have teeth. I don't have food. I have not, none of my needs are met in this moment and I'm alone and no one gives a fuck about me right now. I don't, my family doesn't know where I'm at, nothing. And I, um, I was like, huh, <laughs> I wouldn't call myself unhappy right now. Like, and I just realized in that moment, like, oh, this is something inside of me and no external circumstances can take this away from me. Right. Now I throw it away on a regular basis, you know, when I'm like, <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I can't, whatever. I can't, uh, <laughs> they fucked up my coffee order, you know, <laughs> but I, um, I've lost that and found it again a million times, but something that 
the nightmare button brings or um, which I think sometimes it's a nightmare button. Sometimes it's we're out of alignment, which I think would be a cool conversation to have. Yeah. But that it really is truly inside of you. And that this idea of utopia is a, about creating and cultivating an internal experience that is resilient to right. the external experiences because we all have this kind of fucking sensation that's like, okay, well, when's everyone else going to wake up? When's, when's, when's the government going to care about enlightenment? When is everything outside of me going to be okay? Because then I will I know I have arrived. And this pressure cooker that everyone's living in right now, this cart, like freakishly cartoonish pre yeah. uh, pressure cooker is really putting, forcing us to go inside because that's the only place where utopia is ever going to exist. And that's the only way it ever gets expressed outwardly too. Like that's mm -hmm. the key thing with all of like reality is like, your internal state of consciousness and belief does create this world. So when we look out there and say, oh, well, this is fucked up, that's fucked up, the government's fucked up, all the food's fucked up, which we know is true. Like no one's denying that that's the case. But if you actually want to see that change and it's counterintuitive, you got to deal with your own shit first. Because what what happens if, imagine this hell hell scenario. The world is perfect. There's nothing <laughs> bad and you're fucking miserable because you don't have your shit together. That's worse. It right. seems like it's better because at least everything out there is good, but it's not. Then you're still fucking miserable in a perfect utopian society. That's hell. That's actual hell. Luckily, that's not going to happen. We got a long ways to go until everything out there is perfect, but you do have to like deal with your shit. And I think I truly believed for a very long period of time that I could somehow cheat code my way out of that, that I could somehow find the right skill or mechanism or hack where I didn't have to go through the road of actually integrating and dealing with my bullshit because it truthfully, like it had gotten me pretty far in life, yeah. like very far. So I just assumed that this will continue to work forever and I'll just, wake up and be fully realized without actually having to like fix anything that may be misaligned. And I fully believe that this year, 2023 is the year where if you're trying to escape from your path, from your course, and we're talking about like deep subconscious stuff. It's not what you think your path is, the things you want to do. If you're trying to like get away from that, you will hit turbulence like a lot of it like the plane might crash type of turbulence and I can only speak from personal experience that is exactly what has gone on in my life in, in almost every single way luckily there's like a few pillars of support in my life that are just there and like I, I personally like I don't know that I'm tough enough that if everything in my life was taken away that I could actually handle it I don't know that maybe I could maybe that's true I've been lucky enough that there are these like pillars of some, whether it's friends or family or my kids or whatever, there's enough there that I can always be like, okay, there's foundation for me to work with. I, I don't think it needs to be all stripped away from me. This is like famous last words, but it's not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but the book of Job. Yeah, exactly. And it does feel like the book of Job sometimes. That's when you know you're approaching like the real shit when it does begin to feel like the book of Job. And this is why Jung wrote about it extensively because that is a necessary, it's called the Negredo process in like, uh, alchemy. It's where everything is stripped away. It's the blackening. That's what Negredo is. It's where everything is stripped away and corrodes and decays and everything, not just the bad shit, everything. And that's a necessary precursor for the purification stage where you can actually start to build up some consensus of self that is fully integrated, where you're actually beginning to be aware of different levels of your being and how that fits into the dimension we call 3D reality. And it's not great. It's not like a, a process anyone would willingly want to take on. If you saw it like as a course you could sign up for, you wouldn't be like, that's it. I'll do the Negredo. I'll do the fucking destruction of everything I care about <laughs> in my life. But it's effective, which is why I think it exists. And I I, I think if you, if you get anything out of this is like, don't, freak out or be upset if it starts to happen to you because 
that just perpetuates the situation and it stalls the point of you actually accepting that this is for your benefit. It is not something that is meant to fuck your shit up. That That's just not how things work. But rest assured, if you believe that, it'll feel like that. And, it, uh, and I've been stuck in that for long enough to know that that is actually true. But yeah, the, it's just a necessary part, I think, of becoming more aware. And like when we think of like being a realized or aware being, it sounds like magical and we're so smart. And we have all the perspectives and everything is flowy. And that's not really what it is. It's being aware of everything, including the darkness and the shadow and the not so pretty things and the decay of the world and the destruction of it. Because that's what life is at least here we're not in like the god realm where everything is just beautiful all the time but it it is just like it's a necessary thing that we all have to go through and if you think you don't have to just buckle up no i think you're the last one to go through <laughs> yeah. yep i, I mean, literally there, yeah. there are many people who've had conversations about you in 2020 yeah. and 2021 and yeah. into 2022 and they're like is noah really just going to get to skip yeah <laughs> The fucking washing machine? Yeah. I Maybe he's on it. There was a point where I was like, he just might be on to something. I don't know, because he just got to skip it. And now Noah's 2023, and Noah's yeah. like, all right, listen, guys. Yeah. 2023 <laughs> is the year. Everyone else is like, yeah, we're actually we did in, the, it. We're in the dryer already. We were waiting for you. I'm actually retarded. That's the problem. <laughs> it's not that I'm smart. It's that I'm so slow, it appears that I'm ahead of the game. I'm actually an idiot. So that's basically what I have discovered. And uh, you know, there's a usefulness to it, obviously, but yeah, I thought I could skip it too. I was skipping it just to be clear. It's just what goes up must come down. That is the truth. And that's not like a nefarious or scary thought. It's just, you do have to go through this stuff. Like if you want like an actual life of balance, if you want an actual life of really experiencing what it is, it is a necessary component of that. You don't get to skip that. You have to go through that. And I don't think that I, um, I wouldn't have said I skipped it before because my life obviously hasn't been perfect throughout it before, but I was so detached from it that like I just didn't go through. I was like literally like disassociating from that stuff. And that was what I was, That it's no wonder that I found ketamine back then and I was doing a lot of ketamine because you're literally disassociating from reality. And that's an effective strategy, but it's not a permanent one. You're not going right. to stay in this life if that's where you're going to be your strategy every single time. And God bless ketamine for when I found it. It actually was like a blessing, but you can't stay in that state in perpetuity if you want to be here. That's another place we exist in and go to. Um, but yeah. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Having a good time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I do think there is something about this course correction thing too, that like, that's probably the metaphor I have discovered. Not just, and one other thing I really realized this year, more than any other year is like giving readings and having that as something that I do for people. It's for me. Like I realized that yeah. so fucking quickly when my life was like chaotic, when I started speaking with other people and reading energy and talking about people that these people are sure paying me to do this, but this is a service for me. Like this is literally teaching me more about myself than it is really, at least in my mind. I know that people get something out of it, obviously, but it's so essential to know, at least for me, that this is a universal experience that people go through and being able to actually provide perspective for someone who's really going through a hard time. And like, listen, I used to think the imagination stuff was like for me. I used to think it was like my treat that I was given. But getting emails from people whose kids have like a terminal illness or a brain tumor and they have to go in and decide whether this is going to be like a fatal thing, them reaching out to me, me holding a space for them, teaching them or letting them know about a few things, and then them coming back like a month later and being like, it magically is gone. That's what it's for. It wasn't for me to get like some goodie and brag about my treat and how amazing it is. It literally like the power of this stuff is real, but it's not just for you. Like that is, it's not given to a person 
because they are blessed with having this gift. It's something that's accessible to everyone and it finds people at the right time for their particular path. And if you stray from that, you will be course corrected and usually not in a pleasant way. It's unfortunately, I don't want to say unfortunately, but it's usually not like a, a great experience when you're getting course corrected. It feels like your life is imploding. It feels like, you know, shit is, you know, I think about the submarine people who literally had to go through an implosion. That's like the metaphor for what at least I felt like I was going through. Like it's an implosion. It's not an explosion. It's not like I'm blowing up and everything around me is destroyed. It's everything around me. The pressure is so great that it's literally imploding from the inside. And that is kind of like the spiritual equivalent for what I think this process has been for me. And I'm still in it. It's not gone. It's just, I think now I have a more effective perspective about how to approach it, which will inevitably lead me through it. Yeah, I think once I get to the point where I realize kind of the lesson, you feel like you're on the brink, you're, you're get the lesson is starting to come into, yeah. into shape. Once I figure that out, once I figure out what the energetic, and you almost can't figure that out for no. a while. So it's like once I figure out what the energetic shape is, so like Lyme disease for me was that I was – People pleasing, taking on, uh, and people pleasing, we say like this is a positive thing, but people pleasing is trying to control the experience yeah, of others. Yeah, exactly. Know? And so um, people pleasing, trying to be what I thought other people wanted to me, me to be to avoid conflict, which then led to me being very inauthentic, but it also led to me taking in the energy of every person who was ever going to listen to my podcast to make sure nobody was ever getting triggered by anything. <laughs> and I ended up like making myself sick. I filled my Literally. energy field. And then as an allegory, my body filled with, with parasites and, and spirochetes. Once I figured that out, it was a relatively short process, like a four-month process of recovering from that. Um, once that thing starts to, to take form, you do start to turn a corner. And something that's interesting about the astrology stuff, because I, I, I've also gone through the phase where then I'm, because I got my ass kicked by my Saturn opposition, I start looking at my chart and being like, when's the next thing? Yeah. Trying to predict it. Yeah. You're looking like six years into the future yeah. on the pattern. Is that if you're in alignment, it's the wind at your sails. It's the wind at your back. So um, when my Saturn return was six months out, I got clean. And I got my life together. My Saturn return was fucking amazing. Why? Because I was I didn't know anything about the Saturn return, but I was doing what Saturn wanted me to do, exactly. which was grow the fuck up and get my shit together. So then I had Saturn just assisting me. But in 2020, when that Saturn opposition hit at the same time that Saturn, Saturn was opposite my natal Saturn at the same time it was running back and forth over my Mars and Mercury, Mars representing your, your um, life force, Mercury representing your mind. I was using both of those things, um, not to my own benefit and not necessarily to the benefit of others because I had all this fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear of people getting mad at me. I have some sort of like, I'm going to get burned at the stake for talking about this stuff. And I became like kind of obsessed with staying safe right. and didn't really realize I was doing that. So I wasn't setting boundaries. I wasn't uh, saying no when I meant no. I wasn't holding on to my authenticity. I was just kind of like, what do people want me to do? And a, and a lot of that resulted in me just not doing anything. Of because. Um, and so in that case, Saturn's like, well, you're going to get your ass kicked a little bit here, you know, and, and not only that, but like I had not been taking care of my body, you know, I was not tuned into my body. I was very dissociated for my body. So all those lessons were like harsh lessons, but when we're in alignment, which can sometimes be hard to know what our alignment is, when we are in alignment, these things are they push you forward. Like if you have the pattern and you read the pattern, it's like if your relationship is is on rocky grounds, it's about to get pummeled. If your relationship is great, you're maybe going to take it to the next level. So it's like these energies are not punitive, but did you know you were out of alignment when you had millions of dollars? Like were you aware of the fact no, that you I was were so off your square? No, I was completely I thought I was king of the world. Like yeah. I thought like everything is flowing for me. This is exactly what I want. What just occurred to me, I don't want to lose the thought, is like the wind is the wind. It's blowing no matter what. What alignment is is you have your sails in the direction you want to go in. 
When mm. you're out of alignment, it's you got them going in the other direction, and that's what it feels like. But the wind is just there. It's right. not like it's doing something to you. It's going, and that's trying to get you to a place that Saturn stuff is exactly what the energy of astrology is. It's there. But if you're in line with it, it's going to be a functional thing. Saturn is to get you to take on responsibility, to get accountable, to grow up, to mature. If you're fighting against that, it's going to be a motherfucker. It's going to be the worst thing you've ever gone through. But if you're accepting those lessons, if you're accepting that energy, it is going to be lots of positive transformation and maturation. And for me, I think I just... I really got out of whack. Like my life was very, very flowy and positive, so to speak, when I started communicating deep inherent truths that I knew they were real. I didn't think they were real. I wasn't uh, trying to figure out if they were real. I knew it and it was authentic and I had amazing amounts of energy and I was in flow. I was pumping out like four podcasts a week and it was easy and there was no problems. But when I cut that off and just completely changed which direction I was going in, I, A, didn't know I was doing that. I thought, like I said, I thought I was doing great. I thought, like, this is amazing. Like, who makes this much money this quickly? Who has the ability to do this? Like, this is what I had imagined, and it's happening. And that is kind of the double-edged sword. It's like, you know, the genie in the bottle. Like, it's going to give you the weird thing. You're getting what you asked for, whether you like it or not. That is a power we have, and it's just rather than focusing on like material things, this is where desire gets tricky, and this is what I've always kind of known about desire. It does get a bad rap. Your desires will actually get you exactly where you're supposed to be, but maybe not in the way you thought they would. So your desire may be to be wealthy and you know live in this beautiful place and that's what your desire is but that actually may be related to getting you in line and in tune with yourself which is to show you that's not really what you want your desire is going to get you where you need to be but it may not be the thing you wanted it to be so i do believe it's a functional thing it's just be mindful of what your desires are pointing you towards and try to go beneath the thing that is like not just the material thing, but like the energetic of what you're attracted to because it's going to happen. Like that's what I was saying in the beginning. Like you do not turn this off. It is, there's no off switch in, switch in life for creating your reality. It is always active even if you don't know that it is. So try to practice some mindful awareness of where you are. And the second I turned it off, the second I lost track of that, is probably the second that my life started to go bad, like, and not the way I wanted it to go. And I know in a year, in two years, I'll look back and be like, thank God, thank God that I went through that. I have the necessary perspective. It doesn't feel like that now and I'm pissed <laughs> off and like, fuck this shit. But I, I have the awareness to know that it is something for my benefit. I, I wouldn't, and that's just, I guess my, you know, eternal optimism that is annoying even to myself at sometimes that like I know this is for something good you know I know it is for something meaningful and helpful and I it, it doesn't have to feel like that all the time but I know that and that I do think is why my life has been very magical and blessed and all these amazing experiences and, and connecting with amazing people um, but I think I just, I, I really was trying to skip over like the dark things and really like I, I would, if you would have asked me, I would have said, yes, I am so in touch with my emotions. I know everything that's going on. I'm ex willing to experience all the darkness bullshit, like absolute, <laughs> just like total and utter bullshit. And just cause I know it's bullshit now, it doesn't even mean that I'm actually like putting in the heavy lifting. I'm just becoming aware that there's heavy lifting I have to do to heal that trauma and like deep kind of like schism that has kind of been there with me my entire life. Um, so like I, yeah, I think I'm just realizing, um, like what a tough nut you your your avatar is for your higher self to crack and so it literally had to take you up to the highest yeah. like building it could find to drop, drop me off. off yeah the rest of us were like ow i stubbed my toe and yeah. then we started a dark night of the soul and noah's like no i need to start out with two million dollars yeah like what the fuck like i'd rather have not 
have that. And like the truth is, is like, I don't know what the dollar amount is. I, I I do have full confidence that like this isn't the end of my financial abundance and abundance in general. But if I really want that to be a positive thing in my life, I have to have some real appreciation for what it's there for. Right. right. That's I was at the point where I was literally like setting money on fire. I mean, not literally, but like I might as well have been setting money on fire. And I think it's the worst thing in the world, but I lost any conception of why this could be a useful or functional thing in my life. Like it was ridiculous. I literally was running out of things to buy. Like I, I was just like scrambling. I mean, luckily I had the wherewithal to give money to people because at least I was helping other people with that. And I knew that there was some like benefit for that. But like, yeah, it was, I was so out of whack. And I'm grateful for that. I, I Can you imagine like if it was more and I had kept it, I'd still be veering off course to this day. And I would be probably increasingly more and more unhappy. And I'm lucky that that didn't happen. I did get dropped off the building, but. Well, I think the difference between wealth and abundance is an important lesson. That's true too. Yeah, that's yeah, an yeah, important yeah. lesson because yeah. that's a, uh, that's a slippery. There was something I was just going to say. Um, cause it wasn't just money. I mean, the money's a funnier jokes to make, but yeah. you've had your physical health too, yeah. right? Like you're, you're not, you're not just in the money deep dark night of the soul. No, you're, I'm you just postponed it all to do it at the same time. <laughs> all at the same time. And that I do know about myself. I wait for all of it at the same time. Like it's, it's almost comical. Like how it's like a cartoon basically it literally is a cartoon in both directions so when it's great it's cartoonishly great and when it's bad it's cartoonishly bad i don't also i think one thing that's really important for me is i was reluctant to share any of this like bad stuff because i had been so vocal and upfront about how amazing everything was so i started to feel like an imposter and a fraud like that's partially why I wasn't doing the podcast is like, what the fuck am I going to get up there and say? Everything is great. Your imagination creates everything. And meanwhile, I'm fucking miserable and I'm losing everything I had. Like that doesn't, I shouldn't be up there doing that. But then I started to realize like, oh, maybe you're supposed to be talking about that things aren't going well. Maybe that is going to give a more complete picture of how all of this fits in so people can appreciate when things are going well. And if they're not going well, to know that that's not your final state. You're not stuck in there in perpetuity. But yeah, I mean, like, it's it's a ridiculous cartoon. Well, there's so much value in you doing this. This is so exciting to me. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm sorry great. for your yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry for, for your, your pain. troubles. Yeah, great. But there's so much value in this because I think in the new age movement, the positive thought, the whatever, and I always did try to be balanced with this. Um, but it's still when you're in the when you're in the thick of it, it's hard not to hear you create your reality being synonymous with it's your fault. Right. Right. And I think the first thing you have to do is work on the parts of you that believe in blame or fault because right. those are really like carceral, carceral, right? They're they're embedded in punishment. And you have to release, you have to do work to like ask, like, do I actually believe in this? Do I actually believe that karma is punishment? Right. Do I believe that I'm bad? Do I believe I'm not worthy? You know, there's a, so much work in that to get to the point though where there's neutrality and it's like reality just is. And then we have to address the belief that everything is supposed to be good or positive all the time because that's a huge fucking trap. It's the biggest for me, at least. The yeah. gift of this process is that no matter what's happening, you can find, you can sit with it, to be honest. It's not even like, I wanted to say like you can find neutrality, but it's like, no, you know how to be in the in the space where the the, the rain cloud is, is falling to you and you're not... What am I fucking with words today? Yeah. I haven't successfully gotten a good hit of caffeine yet. Today. Yeah. Everywhere I go, they fuck up the drink. But uh, being able to sit with this one hurts. This is difficult. And not write a story. That's the other right. thing I want to talk about. This, here's where a mental hack will work. Sometimes we mistake feeling our feelings with writing a movie, a victim narrative, right? So I know some people who go through a hard time in life where it's like, uh, everything was great and then I got sick. Everything was great and then I got divorced. And I know so many people by the time they get to their 40s that that was the fucking turning point 
it was 10 years ago. And they're like, my life was great until that point. And, and that's narrative. That is simply narrative. If you can just leave your hand open and be like, I'm in a rough one. I'm in a rough couple of years. It's hard when you're in it. It's hard because you're, you start creating an identity. So before I knew it, I was the Lyme lady. I was the sick person and I had to work to get rid of that. Or I was the person who got left or I was the person who got fired or, or whatever. Yeah. There is a trap there where you can eventually give it so much power that it becomes your whole identity. Right. That, yeah. Rather than sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. That that identity thing is something that I this is where I'm, I'm realizing this as you're saying it is I've really preached like don't take on identities like don't that's where you get into trouble and then you see this very obviously with like political identities or ideological identities and I do as much as I can to stay away from that but that's like the overt stuff I think where I also got into a trap is I took on the identity of like the imagination person and mm. you can imagine this and before I knew it I was like playing a character and like a persona started to emerge where I had avoided all classifications and identities for so long and then as soon as something came along and that it really started like changing my reality I willingly took on that narrative and identity and didn't see that that was also a trap and yeah. like it's crazy to me to look back and see that, but I could feel it at the time because obviously when you have people hitting you up and saying all these things to you and asking you all these questions, like you have answers and stuff, you know, and trying to be mindful that you're not a guru. I've never took on that label in any way, but it's a, your ego is a tricky motherfucking thing and it wants to have an identity because it wants to feel real. And I'm not someone who will ever bash the ego. I think it is a wonderful functional tool that allows us to navigate this world effectively, but it is also tricky and does want to act like it's running the show and it isn't. And so when you find an identity and you really latch onto it, just try to be aware that you're doing that. Because, and I'm saying this to myself as much as anyone else. I'm like advice for other people because I so subtly that happened to me that before I knew it, I had an identity and I was wearing it around proud, proudly like, yeah, I got these techniques and they're so good and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it's like, you know, sure. And they do work. All this shit really does work, but it's not that it works. It's that how can it actually be something that enhances your life and enhance doesn't have to mean make good or better. It's just how can it give you perspective or awareness to work through shit if it's not going well or to appreciate stuff if it is going well because that's what we want. We don't want just to get everything we want. Like I've, I've often said this, like it feels like this reality, like people think about time being this slow, restrictive thing. Think fucking God. Can you imagine if you thought of something and it instantly happened right then? You thought about getting kicked in the nuts and you just got kicked in the nuts? My like, boobs would be huge. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like all these crazy things would happen. So like I'm appreciative of that temporal reality, but we think sometimes like we want stuff and that's not actually what we want. We want the awareness to be able to at least function in a way that allows us like the, if you look at your, anyone's life, the time you've probably felt best is when you can appreciate what you have. Just whatever it is, yep. whatever it is in your life. It could be nothing at a bus stop like that. But just to know that like, I'm okay. Like it doesn't have to be anything. I, I mean, I can tell you, you haven't really experienced kind of depression until, this is going to sound so bad, until you are depressed on a yacht. When you're depressed on a yacht, <laughs> that's real depression. That's real depression. Because then you're like, fuck, I'm supposed to be, I'm in the most beautiful, magical, wonderful place, and I can't even be present and happy here. That's, it sounds like, oh, well, at least you're on a yacht. It's better than being in like a ditch. Yeah, but at least you have the ditch to blame for your. Yeah, your that's the thing that people don't. Uh, <laughs> I used to say like the the scariest form of realizing reality is not real. The scariest template is to be at the top of the mountain and realize it's not there Yeah, because there is some sort. And that's why I think we see like movie stars and stuff take their lives is because of course you, we all are born with this idea that it's out there. It's in a relationship. It's in, it's exactly. in money. It's in success. It's in being seen. It's in fame. It's in these things. 
And if you have the rare opportunity to be firing on all of those cylinders and then you find out it's not there, yeah. that's the worst fucking place to be. That's why we see so many people with who have it all and they're fucking yes. doing drugs and everything yes. else. That is a nightmare place to be because the hope will keep you going because you have like the hope of, oh, when I get there. Exactly. And once it's all there for you and it's still not change it's almost cliche of course to like say it like that but it's true like it is just it's a painful truth that you encounter that there really isn't anything out there that is going to fix solve or make you happy it's just it's not it's you can and you don't realize the truth of that until you kind of go through it or if you're lucky enough you get it before you have to go through that because it sucks. Like it really sucks to really like be, and like you were talking about this with like, you know, your, your music career and the success you had, like you were like, fuck, I have all this stuff and it's not scratching that itch that I was sure it was going to scratch that everyone told me it's going to scratch. And it's kind of a tough reality to face, but luckily, you know, people are resilient. That's one thing I've learned more than probably anything is that like people are so much tougher than you think they are. Like it's, it's actually unbelievable how resilient people are. It's incredible. I mean, you see like a junkie on the street leaning over, you may look at them like some weak defeated person. That motherfucker is somehow finding a way to get up and do drugs in the worst of conditions every fucking day. Like that's, cr it's not a good life. I don't think, but like, no, I wish I had half the work ethic I had back <laughs> right? when that I needed to find drugs. <laughs> like I could, right. Like I that's just a smidge of those days. Right. That's like true motivation. Like when you, I mean, it's just, it's a wild fucking ride. And I, I am hoping at least now by, you know, talking about this stuff and speaking about where I actively am and just committing, like, you know, I, I really made the commitment at the beginning of this month towards the end of June that like, regardless of financial gain, regardless of feedback from other people, like I am doubling down on what I know I'm supposed to be doing. That's why I pumped out all these Zodiac readings for the Patreon. It's like there's 70 people on the Patreon. I used to have like 400 people. It's not like this is for all these people, but I know that this is what I am supposed to be doing now. Even if no one was listening, like this is what I need to do to kind of cleanse myself. And one thing I don't want to get lost because you mentioned a couple times is the body. Your body is the most basic and best tool you have for accessing any of these realizations. And if your body is out of whack, you pretty much have no shot. You like do not have a shot of reaching any level of realization or attainment or bliss or realization because that's like the last signal for you. And when mm. I firmly believe like you have an opportunity to experience truths on a spiritual level. If you pass that up, you got it on an emotional level. If you pass that up, you get it on a mental level. If you pass that up, then you get to the physical level. And that's where your body starts really fucking saying shit to you. That's where I believe autoimmune diseases come from. Even something as simple as like a broken limb. This is what is telling you like you got to pay attention to something. You have to clean it out. And I just know from this cleanse that I've been on, it, it was it snapped me into shape. I didn't realize any of this stuff until I actually started it. I think I probably wouldn't have either. I could have thought about these conceptually and realized all this stuff, but until I at least started to get my body somewhat back on track, it was going to be kind of a fruitless endeavor. Like there was just no possibility of me cleaning up really. And you did a parasite cleanse in that? I did. The first thing was a parasite cleanse, a 14 day one. Then I am finishing today the kidney cleanse, which I've never pissed so much in my life. Fine. Like I'm getting up and peeing like 10 times a night. It's awful. I had a panic attack because I thought I was had kidney stones like a week ago. And my wife is like, you dumbass. You're literally doing the thing that would actually get rid of kidney stones. You're, it was gas. I literally like had a fart. That's what it was. And I literally had a panic attack in the middle at like two in the morning. I'm like getting clammy hands and like almost fainting. And she's like, you're actually an idiot. Uh, and then I'm doing a liver flush starting tomorrow for about 10 days. And then I'm doing like a liver cleanse. No, I'm doing the liver cleanse. Then two days of just pure fasting, this liver flush, then heavy metal detox. And 
I'm not like a, a beacon of health right now. I'm smoking cigarettes. Like it's not like I'm the healthiest person, but just making the conscious decision to pay attention to what I'm putting into my body and making, taking the step to like cleanse anything. It's like, that's a shortcut. That's a fucking hack. Like I've been working on a theory that, um, that the world is run by actual physical parasites Yes. Like we projected onto the elite or the government or whatever, but that is actually microorganism parasites that are um, hijacking human bodies and using us as Edgar suits so that they can experience reality. <sighs> and what we call consciousness unconsciousness is when your, um, your consciousness is, is, actually your body's actually being used by a parasite who's experiencing reality. And so then we are super parasitic when we're in that consciousness. We're very codependent in relationships. We're greedy with money. We're us versus them. It's because we're parasite consciousness. And this is why most people in their awakening journey or in their reawakening journey do a parasite cleanse is because there is some sort of sense that I have to actually get rid of the parasites. And then I also have a theory that all of the parasites together are part of some larger hive mind. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see that kind of perfect chaos workout to where everyone kind of collectively decides that we should eat food that's poison and that we should we should eat a lot of sugar and also the medicine should be garbage and then we should stare at these screens and fuck up our circadian rhythms yeah. is because we are all just kind of in a trance of parasite consciousness. So not to feed uh, an idea like that because it is kind of scary, <laughs> but I will say a couple of things about that. One is several times on moderate doses of ketamine, I had that exact same and I literally felt as I was peeing one time that we are being hijacked by some life form and it is literally controlling us. And they're kind of like laughing at us that like, look what we're making them do. They think they have autonomy. We're just feeding off them. And like, this was a very crystal clear thought. If you know anything about ketamine, when you have those crystal clear thoughts, like it's different than just being kind of in this haze. And then the worst drug experience I've ever had in my life was I was on uh, some acid, kratom, ketamine, nitrous, weed, and then I had the brilliant idea to try smokable DMT for the first time. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. And uh, what could go wrong? <laughs> I did that, and I immediately got blasted out of my body, kind of regressed through physical time all the way back to pre-childhood. And then when I started coming out of it, uh, every in breath, all reality would disappear and I'd be in a void. Every out breath, it would be like an accordion kind of opening up and reality would come back. And then overlaid my friends, who I was physically in the room with, would be these demonic, like alienish vampire life forms that would go like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Money's not real. Just, uh, yeah, give us what we want. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. No, 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 you want to do that. Hey, yeah, no, no, we're your friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we want to do nice things for you. And it was the, I get chills oh just thinking God. about it because like, it was the scared, most scared I have ever been in my life. It knocked me so far off my axis that it took me a solid 10 minutes to just recalibrate to any sense of base reality. And I have not touched ketamine since then. I touched it one other time and it came back just on like a little dose. And I'm like, all right, I think I'm going to put this one away for now. <laughs> um, I won't touch DMT. Um, it completely altered my relationship with drugs in like a very fundamental way. But, and I also couldn't frame it or process it in a way that made sense for at least like two weeks to a month. Like I was just like, what the fuck? I don't believe that. What was that? But it does fit into what you're talking about. And I do believe physical reality is an extension of higher consciousness. So any physical parasite would be an extension of something on a different energetic level. Right. But it doesn't negate the fact that that is a very good theory and feel. And this isn't to like scare anyone like or, you know, make them think they're doomed. I, I think that just the knowledge that that's a possibility should be an empowering thought because you can at least address the issue. But right. I had no idea where that was coming from at the time, but it was 
the most scared I've ever been in my life. It was literally like these demon vampire. I liked something you said later about that because I talked to you about right after it happened. Yeah. And like later down the road, you're like, ah, I synced up with a parasite consciousness because I was being parasitic. Right. I was like, oh, I'm going to go into the other realm exactly. and get some music. Yeah. Exactly. And that is why I think I got shown that it was a reflection of what my intention was. I literally thought like, oh, it's going to the DMT realm and get some cool melodies and bring them <laughs> back for everyone like a fucking <laughs> moron. And of course, like I got served my ass and it was like, yeah, you think you're going to do that here? Have the most terrifying experience of your life. And it probably will be like, I don't think I'm going to top that one. Um, but I do think there is some truth, though, to that these microorganisms that we know are real and do live in our gut biome, which has been proven to affect our higher thought of our brain. Like, we were talking about how everything is kind of poison right there. I mean, I hope people put some awareness on what's going into their bodies. Because Everywhere else in nature, there are parasites that yeah. hijack the brains of organisms right. and get them to do things that are not good for them. Right. Literally kill themselves. Yeah. 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 So I've been doing nervous system work. Yeah. And this is like uh, something I, I, uh, I had a guest, uh, Seth Lyon on a couple of years ago who talked about it and I figured I got it. This is another one of those things where I'm like, oh yeah, I get it. I get it. And um, meanwhile, I'm like, I have crippling social anxiety and right. I can't fucking handle other people. And then I really like in because I got sick in 2020, I just I stopped doing comedy. I stopped leaving the house. I we created a little pot at home and then I just I podcast from home and I it's gotten weirdly that does not improve social anxiety. Yeah, weirdly, go figure. <laughs> uh, never, never forcing yourself to socialize <laughs> does not make you better at it. And so now it's kind of gotten to the point where I, I can't guest on a lot of people's podcasts because I can't, I can't, I would now say my nervous system can't handle it, but I was just kind of calling it social anxiety for the last right. 10 years since I heard that it called that. So, um, I was doing a session with someone recently who, uh, uh, I was talking about, I'd gone out to LA to record an episode of, of my own podcast and bombed on it. Cause this thing got activated and so they started telling me about something called SSP, which is a thing that's actually weirdly gatekept by Western medicine. Mm. But it's you listen to music that is, uh, and you have to do it with a practitioner, and it's like very gatekept. So it's like they have to have master's degrees or whatever. Mm. But like, um, listen to this music. There's five hours of music altogether that is like, out of tune or it's in a different frequency. Mark understands this part. Yeah. And it moves frequency. It's not just in one. It's like yeah. oscillating it. Mm. So it brings you through the expanse of certain frequencies. So it's taking your nervous system in and out of sympathetic and parasympathetic. Have you done this deep dive yet? Do you understand I, the I know system? the differences between those, but I've not done the deep dive. So there's like, I, I haven't memorized it yet, but it's like there's mobilized, which is like fight or flight. And there's immobilized, which is like freeze or fawn. And it seems as if I'm pretty much like my baseline is a freeze and fawn. And so strange things like my digestive system doesn't work, which is, you know, I've talked about on every podcast, uh, to everyone's dismay. Um, that is a symptom of your body being locked in freeze. And I can't, up until very recently, can't even go to like a Target. If I walk into a Target or a grocery store and there are a lot of people in it, my body feels like I am in NOM. I mean, it it's is It's weird like, you don't like New York City. How weird. Yeah, strange, right? <laughs> this is the easiest New York City's ever been for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had things where, well, anyway, so yeah. it's bad. I have a lot of nervous system stuff yeah, is yeah. what I'm learning. And so I started doing this treatment and... Um, you know, I was like, it's five hours of listening total. And I was like, cool, I'll be done in five weeks. No problem. We'll get to five weeks. We had to stop after I had to take a three week break. Um, after we started the third hour because I was losing it. I was, lo and I couldn't tell what was real because my nervous system was having this reaction. Like I'm in fucking danger. And, um, I can handle that sort of stuff. I'm very good at riding like, right. um, bad trips or whatever. But, uh, the person I was working with was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, we had a rough night and they were like, okay, yeah, let's take a little bit of a break. And, um, then I knew I had this trip coming up and then I just kind of sat in this overall sense of being unwanted, which mm -hmm. is my worst nightmare, which is like my nervous system stuff. 
What has started to happen though is like all of these situations that would ordinarily have me losing it. Yeah. I am like, I'm becoming more resilient and able to function in crowds or like if I'm in a small space and um, people are trying to get past me like that, ooh, 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 it, it, like that stuff sends me over the edge. Uh, talking to strangers, um, having an awkward thing where it feels like maybe someone doesn't want me there. I don't even know how to describe it. I have room for experiences mm. that ordinarily launch me into a trauma response. And so I think when we're talking about the body, I think we're talking about what we're eating, how we're exercising, which is both of those things are different for different people. Um, how we're managing stress, but also this nervous system thing, yeah. I think is the key to unlocking like true, truly integrated supernatural abilities. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, like a fundamental level, like that is what's generating our experience. Like right. it's our brain and our connection to our nervous system that like, yeah, my, I, yeah, I'd, I'd be curious if Denise, my wife, knows a lot about this because she's very much into the nervous system stuff and she knows a ton about this shit because she'll talk about nerves and you know how it's all integrated and it's all related and I, I just have no fucking idea what she's talking about yeah. but I know it's I, she's always been right it, annoyingly right for someone like me too like she's always right yeah I mean it makes a lot of sense because if you try to like this is where I always kind of disagreed with the Stoics and like the Socrates and that school of thought is like they viewed the body as a hindrance they viewed it as something where like you need to get rid of the body because it's just fucking your shit up experientially and that just never sat right with me because yeah. it's like well then why do you have a body like what it's did like we come here imagine coming here in the entire time it's like yeah we need to go back yeah like what are you doing like there's there, it kind of just places it and frames it as though this is a mistake or there's something right. that has gone wrong and that we should just not deal with that, which just like never sat right with me. But yeah, I mean, the body is like, it's your gateway. Like it's, yeah, it's your temple. It's a cliche to say, but it is like, it actually is the vessel that holds your consciousness right now. And sure you can break out of it you can do psychedelics and meditate or whatever you want to do, but you're in it. Like, let me know when you're not, but you're in it. So the fact that you would try to do any type of real deep work without acknowledging that or just like omitting it, like it's not going to work. It's mm -hmm. just not going to work. And it's also something you always have access to. Like, it, that's a really good thing. Like, you don't have to like go out and go to a top of a mountain and meditate for fucking 20 years. Like, your body is always there. It's always ready and willing to be used in service for whatever it is you're trying to do. So yeah, I definitely want to hear more about that because I, I, for the first time in my life, I'm actually open to like my body, like teaching me things and paying attention to it. I have completely disregarded it. And so, and that's like a kind of a benefit and, and, and kind of downside of youth is like, you know, you don't have to pay attention to your body. It just works. It does what you want it to do. And then, you know. And you always think when you're young that that's because you're special. Yeah, exactly. And not that because you're exactly. young. I just remember older it's people. And I do think a lot of the deterioration of getting older is choices we make, right? Yeah. Um, I like, I'm starting to have like mobility issues from sitting around for two years. Yeah. And it's like, I know the adults, the generation above me think that your hips just stop working. And it's like, no, you just have to do mobility work. You can no longer get away with not doing mobility work. Yeah. But I remember when I was young and older people would talk about their experiences and me just being like, I don't have to deal with it. Exactly. And really thinking it's because I'm magic and not because I'm 28. <laughs> I know I'm about to be 40. It actually isn't bothering me that I'm going to be 40. It's bothering my parents a lot. Really? They're really, yeah. Cause they're like, fuck, like our son is about to be 40. We're super fucking old. <laughs> and I'm like, like, I don't feel old and I don't feel old, but I, I really have started to notice some, and the parasite thing, I strangely have not had digestive issues until the past year or so. And they have, Propped up like I'd never been constipated my entire life and now I'm like I haven't pooped for three days like what the fuck is going on and it's all related I think again I think it's like 
good to be aware of this. It's not pleasant in any way, shape or form, but like it's a way to at least like you shouldn't be happy that you have all of these things not going great, but at least you have a route to approach your shit. Literally, you have like a, <laughs> you have like a route to actually like deal with your stuff. That's where I think hopelessness actually starts to come in when you feel like you have no options. Right. I don't know anyone with no options. You could look at the most hopeless person in the world from the outside looking in. They have options. Like there's one beautiful thing about this world is you kind of always have the option to do something about your life. It doesn't go away. Um, there's gradients and degrees of that, but. Yeah. Fuck. All right. Well, Mark <sighs> kind of dominated this episode. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, like, he's talking way too much. Yeah. This is fucked up. He's literally yawning, by the way. <laughs> it's like, looks like you're going you're done to yet. <laughs> uh, no, this... I've been enjoying your guys' conversations. I, I don't have anything to add. I'm not going to no, jet awesome. in. Well, I think this is a natural place. Thank you guys for doing this. Yeah, I really appreciate it. That was fun. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you enjoyed that episode i sure did it's always great catching up with jessa and mark they're super fucking cool uh i love them they're just the best uh a reminder if you want live streams music making fun stuff listen i'm not gonna lie the patreon used to be shit I didn't do anything for it. I took advantage of people's good intentions and being awesome who gave me money every month for very little content and energy in exchange. Um, and I've changed that. I am actually now you doing a Patreon that I'm actually proud of. Like you're getting a ton of content there. Um, I'm releasing a lot of it for free so people can get a taste and sense of what it's about. And if you're into it and you dig it, sign up. It's patreon.com slash synchronicity. That's the place to be. I hope to see you in there. We have a lot of fun. We're creating a real community of just like-minded dope people. That's what it is. And there's no commitment. You can sign up and be like, this sucks. I don't want to do it. And you know, that's it. You don't have to stay. All right. That's it. I will see you soon for another episode. Until then, a bye-bye.